presentation we just had was about the, the individual training of the athlete to become the best uh, he or she can be. Um, but we are in a team sport and, and uh, I think everybody who works with teams, not just in handball, you find out that we can get a lot of people together in a group, but still it's a question if they are successful as a team. And, and um, so team dynamics, and before we start talking about it, anybody, any idea what, what, we, we, uh, what we say, what is team dynamics? Okay, relations in the, within the group. Yeah, okay. Anybody else? Working good together in any situation. I didn't, I didn't hear it. Working good together in yeah. any situation. Okay, okay. Anybody else? Because we deal with it every, we are humble coaches, we deal with it every day. Ha team dynamics is everything that's happening within a team. And even in the surroundings of the team. Because if you have a team, or you take a, a men's team, um, but his wife is pregnant with one of the players, is that team dynamics? Yes, it influences the player. So it has an effect on the team. So it's part of team dynamics. And now how do you handle that as a coach? It's not so easy. I will, I will take you a little bit on, on the way I work with team dynamics because um, Maybe it's not so complicated. This is about human development. It's, in Dutch it says it's the development to the, towards the insulin resistant human being. Um, that's why I'm in sports. <laughs> but uh, we are all developing all the time. Um, we talked about uh, the... Uh, you don't have to be so quiet. Yeah. It takes less time and it's less disturbing. <laughs> uh, and and um, we're all developing and now is uh, also as a team, we're thinking uh, what are we developing to? This is not handball, but this is also a team. They have their goal behind them. They can't see it. They have no coach in the boat. They have to do it all by themselves and still they finish and they get good performance. Um, I find m most coaches make themselves too important in the wrong way. Yes, we are important. Their coach is also important, but he's not in the boat. So I think my job is to help my players to be as self-steering as possible. For them, it's no other possibility. If you are a coach of a beach volleyball team, you are not allowed to coach, or of tennis players. We are lucky on one side, because we have a lot of possibilities to intervene in the, in the match. But there is also uh, a trap, because if I intervene a lot, I make the players more dependent of what I do. And I choose to see it a different way. I want the players to be more independent of me and be able to make their own decisions. When you see the, 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 the clips that Lyubo sh showed this morning, how fast the game is, how uh, few time you have to make the right decisions. If you have to look at the bench every time to ask the trainer what to do, most of the time you will not make the right decision or you miss the moment in the game. So how do I look at the team? The, the blue dots in the middle are my athletes, my players. They are in the, and I made them uh, uh, a circle and together they, they build a team. Around it we have the staff. It's another circle. A circle is nice because it's a perfect shape. You have pressure from all sides and you are strong from all sides. And the staff is also a team. But um, I think for a coach it's important to understand these are two different teams. And the way you work with the team, you should do with your staff also, as you do with your players. And then we have the outer circle. That's also, uh, if, if, you, if you can realize it, it can also be a team. And we have there the, the president of the club, or the president of the federation, or the sponsor, uh, but also the parents, uh, the partners, family and friends. They're in the outer circle, but they influence the players. And now how do you, um, how do you handle that? How do you do it now? 
how do you handle your team and your in your team surroundings? Anybody? They don't do it. I've learned a few. Yeah, okay. Uh, I do it like you do. Divide it and treat them separately. As okay. Teams. Okay. And how and how do you treat them? Uh, what what do you do with them? I involve out the circle by telling them what we're doing in in the circle. So communicating. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And you you're informing the outer circle about what you're doing inside. Yes. So they don't make up their own. Yeah. About I think it's very important. Uh, we talked with, with Hugo yesterday about his outer circle, which is very uh, influential in, in Hungary. Uh, if they have your answers, because they also get questions in their surroundings, if they have your answers, it's easier for them to make the right decision and you have more uh, peace and quiet. So, okay, so communication is a big, a big issue it, on, on both uh, ways. Yeah? Anybody else? I learned two things already about Norway these two days. First, I always thought salmon was an important product, but now I find that yogurt is uh, more important. <laughs> and, 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 and the second thing is, um, uh, well, we, we don't uh, realize it maybe now, but yesterday I found out Norwegians talk a lot. They always say, well, they're a little bit reserved and uh, back, but yesterday in, in, during dinner, uh, speeches all the time and everybody was, and now we're quiet. How come? <laughs> why don't we ask questions? Why don't we say how we work? Yeah. Uh, some of the problems I experience are you can tell people what you're doing, but you have to try to involve them, so they yeah. are more uh, de 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 dedicated. To the yeah. It's about ownership. You make them own their own. Uh, so in, in, instead of. Um, Instead of this, you do that. Yeah, okay. Anybody agree? It's difficult. Have you got any idea why, why we uh, don't get a discussion now? Maybe some of them are afraid to speak English. I don't know. I don't know. If you don't tell me, I don't know. You're afraid of making mistakes. Afraid of ma you are afraid of making mistakes. Not me, but no. Other people. <laughs> no. So you're afraid of making mistakes. He's not. Okay. Um, but this is this can also happen if you start talking with your team and you ask them the question. Okay, you talk uh, because also then you have a group of people and not everybody in the team is by him or herself uh, able to speak up in a group. <laughs> Some can speak in when they are with two only, and others are more comfortable. Uh, and with 160 people, it's even more difficult. That's what we find out now. Um, interesting thing, who thinks, I have a question, but I think it's a stupid question. Nobody. Because there are no stupid questions. There is one stupid question, that's the one you didn't ask when you go out the door. That's the only stupid question. But um, communication is one issue. The source of dynamics is this. Um, and when we go back to the picture, you can see, okay, we have a, we have a team. But that, uh, a team, is, it only exists, uh, it's imaginary. We can put people in the same jersey, but that doesn't mean it's a team. Team is in your mind or in your heart. Uh, you have to feel it. So it's not it's not automatically there when we put on the same shirt. We hope so, but we have to work uh, for it. Um, because in the team there's a lot of me. As you sit here, when you say, "Okay, maybe we're afraid to make mistakes," it's about me. I'm afraid to ask a question, or I'm afraid to give an answer, or I'm I don't know what. Um, but if we want to be a team and we, we make development as our goal for these three days, we need each other's help. And you know that because yesterday, after dinner, you have a lot of communication and questions, I think, with some beer. Not Heineken, because that's water. Yeah, okay. But we sell a lot of it. <laughs> Good selling. 
Yeah, we got we got the salesman, Dutch salesman. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, if you work with teams, a lot of times coaches say, "Well, the we." It's all about the we. And and a lot of the times we forget the me. And me in a team, we have a you. So then we are two, or even more. And then we create the we. But it is an is the is an action of the team. And as a coach, I'm responsible for this process. So I have to recognize the me also all the time. And everybody who works with the professional players, it's, it's more obvious. We saw football, we saw uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, we talked about Messi. And okay, Ronaldo is a little bit me showing off. Uh, but if he doesn't get the me, he will not be able to participate in the we. Because the we is built up from a lot of me's. Um, so remember that if you work um, any team, in any team, because we have a, a small team is two. Everybody who is in the relationship, it's, it's a team. How do you handle your team? But uh, now we noticed, we talked yesterday, we started with handball and we finished with China and Korea and Trump and uh, the whole world it could be a team. Would be nice, but. It's a little bit of work, but it's the same principle. Recognize if we, you start talking to China, it's a different me than the me we have here in Europe. And if you want to make it, then you have to find recognize they're different and we work together. You find common ground. It's a humble team, it can be a company. Um, and you find it's, it, they all work in the same, in the same way. I have a, this is my toolbox for uh, working with a team. These are the topics that I address. I do it a similar way like you do. I ask, I let them uh, decide or think or discuss. And then I hear what they have to say. Because, like I said yesterday, um, the team is, uh, is what it's about. It's not about me, it's about the performance of the team. That's why the, the, the German Federation hires me, it's why the Dutch Federation hired me to make the team successful. Um, I'll start in the middle. It's about goals. It's about big goals, small goals. It's about uh, maybe short-term goals, long-term goals. And I let the players talk about the goals, the goals for the team. And when we look at the first picture where we have the, the, the staff, the staff also talk about the goals, but about the goals for the staff, not about... If we talk with the staff, the first time I did it, they say, yes, we want to be world champion. I say, no. You're a physiotherapist, you cannot be world champion. You have to think what is your goal? What is our goal as staff to help the team? It's a different goal, but you have to do the same process. So that's goals. How do you, how do you set the goals for your team? Do you do it yourself? Discuss with the team. You discuss with the team. You have a president of the club? Yes. He doesn't tell you what the goals are? Now this is uh, actually children support. Oh, okay. But, but we do this totally the same process. Yeah? Yes. At what age? 11. Okay, good. Because you'll find out they know a lot more than you think. And if you don't ask, you'll never find out. I know. Yeah, that's good. Um, I'm the president of the club as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then, thank you. Yeah? But that's, that's very important because uh, I hope that you don't set the goals for the other teams you're not involved in. Then it's good. Um, because an uh, important thing is you, you get a lot more ownership, you get a lot more strength and power from the team if they have influence on goal setting. If they can tell what they think and you start communicating, uh, they feel part of it and you get a whole different energy. And everybody who works in the company and, and a, a lot of salespeople, they get the targets from, from the top. This year you have to make one million uh, sales and, and then they say, well, it's not my goal. This one is, uh, well, it's not clear to read, but it's about, uh, it's about values, about shared values. First of all, you need a common goal. It's the goal we want to achieve as a team. And it's goals that you have um, for the players and for us, it should be um, most important thing is that we know that in, well, 
in any case, the, the team goal comes first, which is not always easy. I talked a few weeks ago with a football club and um, I said, okay, now we talk about team goals, very nice about we and we have it all. But now, it was a young uh, coach for young uh, players. I said, now there's a scout from, he was his coach in Werder Bremen in Germany. I said, but now you have a game and the scout from Bayern Munich is on the, on the stands looking for one of your players. How about the we for this player in this match? Everything changes all of a sudden. The five minutes before the game, he hears, oh, there's a scout, he's coming to look for me. So if he plays well, he has a contract which may change his life completely. It's about goals. And then we go to values. Um, again, if you go to, if you go to uh, China, the values in life are completely different from what we value here, for as far as we know. But in your team, how is it in your team? We're all Norwegian. All the values are the same or not? Do you discuss the values also? My team, uh, uh, earlier I didn't uh, have a lot of interest in these kind of questions, but last year, uh, in my club, we are all players, uh, set their own values and also their own goals. Perfect. But, uh, and how did it work out? Maybe we have to, it worked out well, but you have to help them a little bit because they are young. Yeah. Yeah. It's that if you see yourself as the guardian of the process and not the, the, the teller of the outcome, I think you have, a, you have the right role because you give them the opportunity to, to talk. But a lot of teams forget the values. They talk about goals and even involve the team in the goals. But the values you have um, determine your behavior. And in the beginning, the interesting thing is, if we, if we ask uh, players, okay, you write down the values. Then you might think, okay, what if there come very funny things that I don't agree with? Um, how do you handle that? I found out over the years, no matter what group, young, old, men, women, they all come up with a lot of the same things. Um, and uh, we work with Russian, with Swedish, with Dutch, with French, uh, anywhere. Uh, you come with. But then we take the word respect. It's a lot. It's, uh, they use it a lot. We want to be respectful. But that doesn't say anything. What does respectful mean? Because respect in one culture, you show it in a completely different way. In some cultures, it's not respectful to look another person in the eye when you talk. In other cultures, it's not polite if you don't. So you have to uh, address, and that's why you have to help not only children, but also grown-ups, to talk about values, but write it down in terms of behavior. How can I see that you value this? Because that's what we can observe. And if you only write the beautiful names of respect and, and loyalty, or how do you see loyalty? How do you see respect? How do you see support? So write it down more specifically in terms of behavior. Because behavior I can see. I can see people sitting in a laptop, I can see people sit a little more relaxed or thinking or whatever. That's what you can see or hear. But respect is just something in your mind. Uh, the next thing I, I, I work with is uh, communication. Um, if we talk about goals, if we talk about values, yeah? Uh, yeah, before communication. Yeah. Uh, wouldn't you say you could have maybe the values before the goals? The values are more important for... Yes, yes. But it's, I don't think it's, it's about more important. The important thing is you address them all. Yeah. Because you can talk about values, but if you forget the goals, you will not be effective as a team because nobody knows where to go. And if you do the goals, but you forget the values, you have the same problem. So it's not that one is more important than the other. The most important thing is that you address them both, but it, it, it's, it helps you. What, what should a goal do? Why do we need goals? Direction. Anybody who said it? Direction. Direction, yeah. I've got to know where I have to go, yeah. Anything else? What should a goal do also? Create uh, engagement and commitment. Yeah. Or the goals create something. 
you need commitment to achieve it. And, and it would be nice if the goal shows you where you want to go, but it should also give you an impulse to do something, invite you to action. Because if I can achieve my goal by sitting on a chair and do nothing, it's not very uh, challenging. So I uh, think about the goals, it should be maybe hard to reach, but invite me to do something. I have to make a contribution to achieve the goal, and it has to show us where we are going, where do we want to go to. And it would be interesting if it was a goal where we have 100% control about achieving it. Because when I start, and players say, yes, we want to be a world champion. I say, it's a nice goal. For that, we have to win probably eight games at a world championship, or maybe seven, if you're lucky. Um, but every game, you have only 50% of the game is ours. The other 50%, at least, is the opponent. So that's, if you take that in about eight games, then you're not a big percentage what is ours. So rethink what kind of goals you write down. And if you only write down the results, you'll find not many players can deal with result goals. Most of them feel pressure and perform less. So you need more maybe process goals. How to develop, what do we want to, how do we want to play more than we want to win with 10 or 12. That's not often um, very helpful. But then again, you have to do that with your team, in communicating with your team. And, and um, so if you want to talk about goals, if you want to talk about value, and values is, is getting close to who am I? Where do I stand for as a coach, but also as a player? For that, you need open communication. People have to be, like this morning, open to tell what they think, to tell what they feel. And for that, you know why? It's so hard to get a discussion with 160 people. It's not a safe environment. Like you said, afraid maybe to make mistakes or ask a silly question or say something that the people say, well, who's that guy? Um, it's not safe. When it's safe, you will speak. When you, and it's an individual thing. Some people feel more safe in this environment than others. And it will be the same in your group, even if you're a group of two or three or five or 16. Create a safe environment so people feel free to speak. And in every group, there will be, if you have 16 players, two, three, four, who will talk a lot. Some will participate and others you will have to pull into the discussion or else they will sit and wait till it's over and then say, okay, and we go. Um, so make sure the environment is safe and everybody feels free to talk, is allowed to talk, Every opinion is valued as much as the other. Um, and if you achieve that, you will find a team discussing. And I think if you work with children, um, it may be even easier than with grown-ups. Because they don't think that much yet about how do I look, how do I think about, what do they think about me. They just have an opinion. And if you ask them, they will give it often more freely than, than the adults. You will find that out when you go to China. Yeah, this is not so easy. Um, so open communication is a big issue. And the next one is this. Uh, people aren't your problem. The problem is the work system and the processes don't allow the people to shine. That means, for me, that stands for clear and matching tasks and roles within the team. Everybody has to know why they're in the team, what's their task, what's their role, what they have to do, what's expected from them and it should be matching to who they are and their capabilities. When we talked before about the, the athletic training and I want to play fast, but I don't use the players. I, I take uh, players like Sterwig, but not in the goal, but in the field. And I said, now we play fast. I think he's two meters and what was 119 kilo? That will be difficult. So you have to play and you have to have the, the tasks and the roles within the team matching the players you have. Because if I ask you something that you know you're not able to, to fulfill, you get frustrated and you'll get, you will get away from the team, or at least from me as a coach, and it will disturb the team dynamics. Um, but also for that, you need, again, open communication, because people have to speak up if they don't agree, or if they feel uh, maybe they think they can do more, or maybe they think you ask too much from them. Um, so it's all the time 
you have to get in touch with the players and, and, um, and make sure they feel free to speak their mind out. And, and uh, for that, I, I mean, I'm a national team coach and I can hope for open communication. And as open as I am, I'm always aware that I'm also the guy that says, you will not go to the Olympics. Uh, yes, you will go and you will go not. So they will not be completely open to me because they will always have something in their heads to say, well, if I tell him this, I'm out of the team. Maybe. <coughs> Most of the time, their fears are bigger than the reality, but they don't know that. Um, so you have to deal with it. And if you work with the kids, that won't be a problem. If you get higher, and it, it depends more of it. Uh, being in the Olympics is maybe a one-time in a life experience. You will find people get more careful about what they say because they know your decision. And that's for you need a staff. You need physiotherapists, yes? I think you're a bit wrong, actually. Uh, okay. For children, because <coughs> when there are 10 years, the Norwegian Handball Federation has decided to divide it into different levels. Okay. So they get, some get to play on the highest level, okay. some are on the second, some are on the third, and there it starts. Yeah, okay. So somebody yeah. has to tell you are not going to this. Tournament, you're not playing here. So actually, it starts with the children. Here you well. Yes. Okay, but that's um, okay. Then I was wrong. But I didn't know you had this already in the in the federation. Everywhere where you get selection, yeah, you get this like process. Yeah. Years, yeah. It starts selection. It's the same. If you start young, you get it already in a younger age. Yeah. I had a discussion. We talked about Ajax yesterday. They select at six, and then I asked him which one of the six-year-olds from the past is now in the first team or in professional football. They say none. I said, why do you select six-year-olds? <laughs> they don't develop, they select every year new ones. And in the end, yeah, it's, it's funny, but it's crazy. They have, they have uh, uh, performance talks with six-year-olds. <laughs> Whether they get a contract, for, yeah, we laugh, but it's, it's reality. It's, it's sad, in fact. But that's when you happen, if you start selecting too soon, it, it, it does something also with the mind of the children, and it's a pity because uh, to stay open, to stay free in your thinking and doing it, it's, it's a great value, I think, for the kids and also for the players later on. But then again, okay, at some point you have to work with it. So if, if you talk about the tasks and, and, the, and, and the roles, look at your team. What can they achieve? We have a, a World Cup football with Van Gaal, the last time we were in it. <laughs> uh, and you get the third place. And he got a lot of criticism because he didn't play the Dutch way, football. But what he did was, he looked at the team, he said, well, it's nice, this Dutch way to play football. I can play fast or dominant, they want to play dominant, but I don't have the players. So he changed the philosophy and he was more successful than the guy who came after him because now they're not again at the, at the World Championship. So I always look for the, who is in my team and, and make sure they do the things they can and, and where they feel at home. The next one is, uh, is the guy looking in the mirror and asking himself, well, what do you think about yourself? It's about evaluation. In fact, we do it all the time, but you have to do it regularly and you have to do it structurally and evaluate everything. Not all the time, but if you have a training, I'm sure after training you say, well, today was not so good. Maybe it's not my own performance was so good or maybe it's not the, the, the team wasn't working well. You evaluate all the time. Um, if you're in competition, you evaluate after the match. Did we win? Did we lose? How was the strategy working out? And the interesting thing is that um, I work now in Germany. We have two bad tournaments, World Championship Women and the European Championship Men from the result part of you. Um, and now the men team, they, they really... Uh, they took a long time to evaluate because next year they have the World Championship in Germany and they want to perform well. But when they became European champion two years ago or bronze medal at the Olympics, they did not evaluate as deeply. And I think that's where you go wrong. If we make mistakes, we evaluate, oh, what to do wrong? How can I improve? But as I say, you have to repair the roof when the sun is shining. So also when you win, evaluate how come you win? What did we do right? What is our way to success and how can we make sure next time we do it again? When I started my career as a coach, it was 25 years, 26 years ago. We trained a club in Holland. We win the first five matches. 
And I've had one player come from Amsterdam and he shout in the press, we are Ajax from handball. At that time Ajax was winning some matches. And the next match we lose. Because we were not thinking anymore, oh, success is there so it will stay there. But it's not the case. So always, also if you, if you have success, if you win, analyze your wins as much as you analyze your losses. But when you lose, everybody is, is analyzing and telling you what had, should have been different or not. But do the same thing as uh, when you win. The next one is an uh, important thing is about acceptance. Accept, accept your part in the group, your role in the group, accept the goals you've, you've uh, uh, talked about and you've agreed upon. Um, accept the values, the shared values, even if it's always a little bit maybe outside of your comfort zone. Um, and question it. Um, and you'll find out if people stop accepting things or you will see different behavior. Uh, we'll get to that later on. And the last thing, in the end, it's about uh, appreciation and reward. It should be uh, in the right amount, in the right time, for the right person. And it's not always about money. And most of the time it's not about money. It's about feeling valued in the team. It's, uh, of course, like we talked about Ronaldo, we could talk about Karabatic. But you have in every team the more invisible players who have a big, play a big part in, in the success, but they don't score so many goals, but they put a lot of work hard in the training, in the games, and, and um, if you don't value them also. Their me is also asking for being seen and being uh, appreciated and being valued. And that is um, one of the most important things. And, and since this is also a Craft Institute presentation, um, there was also a nice story, we can talk about uh, handball and the same things happen in football. When Cruyff was the coach in Barcelona, he wanted to have Stoitskov uh, in the team. And at that time he was playing in Bulgaria. And um, so the president of, uh, of Barcelona said, okay, that's good, we'll get him, that will be cheap. Uh, he's not a very expensive player. But he didn't know that Cruyff already had phoned with Stoitskov. And he said, below this amount, you say no. Uh, and and Soskov said, are you crazy? <laughs> because Barcelona came, I, I just named figures, I don't know exact figures, and he, they offer him 50,000 a month or... And he, at the time, he, maybe he, he'd earned 5,000. And Christ said, no, I want you to at least have uh, 250,000. And he was, Soskov found it very difficult because he said, well, I can improve, I can earn a lot of money. And in the end, he came to Barcelona for the amount that Christ wanted. And he explained why. He said, well, I want you to be the top player that you can be. But in, in football, I don't know how uh, in men's handball, I think it's not that, that bad. In the locker room, if you don't earn the money, you have nothing to say. He says, so yeah, bring Stoikov in the, in, the, in the locker room. And he's not valued uh, the way he should be valued. He will never be able to play uh, like he should play for me. So the value, and often it's exp expressed in money, is a very important part in making a team also work. Because if it's about acceptance. And if you understand these processes, if you, if you dig into it as a coach, you will find out you have a, a lot more influence in the performance of your team. And it's not about tactics. It's not about technique, it's not about athletic. It's about human beings working together in a group. And when I go back, um, Like I said, the smallest t team is, a, is, a, is two. Who is in the relationship? Now we see some hands. Okay. So I thought Norway is a nation of singles. <laughs> but okay. Uh, who, who, who has sat down with his partner or her partner and talked about common goals lately? Or shared values? No. We get together, we're in love and everything is okay and 10 years later we divorce because yeah, somehow we grew apart. That's what happened in a team. If you were 16, it's even more complex than with two. And if we don't manage it with two. Oh. And it's, it's, uh, try it. You'll like it. Sit down and ask your, your husband or your wife or your friend or your girlfriend, um, what are our common goals? 
What do we want to achieve together in this relationship? And look what happens. And um, yeah, yeah. Maybe you get a divorce. You never know. Okay. But at least you know it. It's it's the same like like uh, him trying to move very carefully and better to know and to start and to start new than to torture yourself for many many years to come. And that goes for the other person, of course, also. But if you so address the, the, the things uh, um, with the team, and these are in fact the, 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 the things that I work with uh, in any team. Um, I started with the German team, completely new, new culture, um, uh, even though we're neighbors, and, and the, 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 the sports director, well, they had their let's say small doubts if the way I work with the, the, the self-responsibility of the players would work with the German team because before me there was a coach who was more telling than asking and, and well they, and it's a little bit also in the German culture that yeah they, they, they look for a leader who tells them what to do and I am pretty extreme on the other side um, and then we start uh, we come together in February, we had uh, three days and the first thing I say, okay, I go out, the whole staff goes out and you sit down and talk about what's important, the values or the goals or whatever you need, we think we need as a, and they write it down and now we start. Um, and we start with values and we start with goals. Um, we start, they ask for clear tasks and roles was one of their important things. We want to have clear clarity about why am I here? What, what, what do you expect from me? They want to have a, what do you call it, loose atmosphere, not too tight, not too, uh, too much tension. They had a lot of pressure before the World Championship, of course. So that's how I... Um, should do something. Okay, this is... Uh, This is about values, because values uh, uh, is, come from the culture you come from. This, I, I told you yesterday about the book uh, uh, Legend from the, the rugby team. This is one of the coaches from the All Blacks. And they have a culture in their team. They live, they, they perform, they train within their culture. And this, uh, I think it's a nice quote, culture eats strategy for breakfast. You can think a lot about what you want to do today, but What's behind you, what's inside you, uh, is, is more uh, dominating, is more strong than, than the plans you have for this match. And if you have the culture, the right culture in your team, then uh, the strategy will be uh, okay. You can see this is an old presentation. But it's still working. Okay. So what do you observe as a coach? One of the most uh, important qualities or competencies you need as a coach is to be able to observe, to see uh, body language, facial expressions, uh, not just if they walk the right way in the, in the tactical, but also uh, how they look. When we talked after the game uh, in Rio, you told us in the warm-up you already saw it was thin air, what we shown, although they had the, the behavior, but you could see um, that there was not the, the strength behind it to, to win the match. And that's what's important as a coach, to observe and to see uh, what's going on. Um, then you have talked about values, about goals, about roles and everything, and people say, yes, okay, that means this, 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 this is what I'm going to do, this is what you're going to see from me. And then you observe and then you look for consistency. Do the words match the accents? And if not, do your research. Just talk, ask, uh, find out what's going on. If it's still okay, if you're still online, um, do it on an individual basis. Because if not, if you do it in a group, you'll get the same situation as now. Not everybody will speak up. Just always make the situation safe. But you have to do uh, your observations. Now, I hope this works. No, it doesn't work. Yeah. 
Just observe. You know it? Okay. See anything? If you know it, it's, it's obvious. Who noticed anything? There was a bear in the background. Okay. Anything else? The public changed the thing he was holding. Okay. That's uh, about observation. Um, if you know what to look for, it's easy. And you can train yourself in doing so. But, uh, um, and for that, um, you'll find, uh, like in the discussions with your team, if you take yourself a little bit outside of the action and you observe, you see a lot more and you can influence the process a lot more in the right direction than when you're into the game. Anybody who has been a player coach knows that when I'm in the field and I have to play, I cannot coach. It's a very difficult position. That's why we have to coach on the bench. But also on the bench we have emotions. And you'll find if my emotions get too high, my brain stops functioning, at least the outer layer. My, my lizard brain will work, but that doesn't help me so much. Um, and our, my observations will go down and I will be make, less able to make the right decisions. So train yourself in observation and know that that's one of the, the biggest tasks you have. And, and um, the next one is, uh, for me, very important if I work with, with uh, players. Um, I think this is one of the most important things if you're coaching people. Uh, it's my job to see uh, the genius in every player to see their qualities, to see their strength. And if I, if I judge him by what he doesn't do, or what he doesn't can, he will think or she will think she's stupid and will never perform and achieve. We have had players in Holland, they were in no junior national team or a regional selection, never. And when we opened the doors of the academy, they came in because they wanted to be professional handball player and nobody, not in the club, thought, well, it's they can't make it, but they train, 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 and now they play in the first league in Germany. And don't judge, but give them the, the, the chance and I think uh, see the genius in, in, in everybody uh, that you coach. And this one, we've been here for three days now, or you've been here for three days. You've listened to a lot of people, including me, and we are telling the truth as we see it. And don't forget, uh, your career, your, your job as a coach is about you and, and it's about this. I can tell anything and it's good to stay independent in your mind, think for yourself because you go your way, I go mine and it's not the same. So don't copy me or Yubo or anybody else but think about yourself, how do you think? I think about working with teams, working with people 
um, and take the action to get there. So, um, in the room, um, who of you, before you came here, had clear uh, goals what you wanted to achieve these three days for your own development? I see one, two. Did you achieve the goals? Yes. Yeah, okay. How was it for the rest? How did you get here? With what mindset did you start these this, this, uh, three days? It's difficult. Um, but we expect our players to come to training. I, uh, um, there's a story about Anja Andersen that maybe you've heard also. She was trained in Romania not so long because there was a clash of culture also. Uh, first training, the players come and they ask, she asked the players, okay, what do you want to train today? And then Romanian players, I don't know. Okay, end of training, see you tomorrow. And the next day, <laughs> yeah. But I think if, you, if we want our players to be part of, be owner of the process, uh, is that the same behavior we show when we are here for our development? Just think about it. I think if you have goals also for these meetings, you will get more out of it. You'll achieve more, you'll improve yourself more. And you have different discussions when you meet each other next year. Unless you say, okay, I am here to meet old friends. We see, the, we see each other once a year at this meeting. <laughs> nice for Mats and Janir that they organize this for us. <laughs> but it's more at the bar than uh, in, in the afternoon. But uh, uh, be aware why am I here? And, and, and have I set my goals? Because I expect for my players to do so. And why don't I do it myself? Is a question. And you don't have to answer now.